We are now in the last script of our guided project on land cover analysis. In the previous script, we learned the basic technique for computing areas of classified images, where we use a group reducer and we caught the area for each class in a single region. Uh, now we want to kind of take this to the next level and say, how do I do this for multiple regions? Maybe I have a shape file with thousand polygons and I want to know the land cover uh, in each of those polygons. Uh, or maybe I want to say, I want to do this for every uh, district in our state and I want to know the land cover distribution of all of that. So let's see how to do this. First, we'll select multiple regions. So here I'm going to uh, scale this to all the, the re all the districts in a particular state. So we'll apply uh, a filter and say, take our admin to collection, which is all the admin to regions in the world, and we'll filter it to uh, the admin two name, which is this one. So admin one, I'm sorry, we'll filter it to all the admin one name of this. Let's see what this is. This will contain all polygons for all the admin two regions in this particular state. And if I just uh, print the size, you see there are 32 districts contained in this poly in this state. Now, what I want to know is I want to know the land cover distribution in each of those polygons. So instead of just saying, oh, I had at one district, what is the land cover? I want to now have a spreadsheet where I have one row for each district and I want to know what are the class areas for each of them. Now this takes a lot of computation and if you want to do this one by one, you can get pretty challenging. I can also kind of scale this to say, I want to do this for every district in my country. And if you're given a task like this, this is easily uh, can take weeks or months to do this because you now have to run this analysis for 573 districts of your region. But we can learn technique where at the end of the script, you'll know how to do this for uh, large volumes of polygons like this. So let's just do this for admin, all the uh, admin uh, one uh, districts first. So we'll just take this 32 districts and we'll get generate a table of the class areas for each of them. So the basic concept is that we know how to calculate this area for each one district. That's a code from the previous script. We want to put that in a function and then map that function on this collection. That means this computation will be applied to each of them. So let's see how to do this. So we'll first write a function, calculate uh, class areas. So this is a function that takes one feature as an input and it returns something, right? So it takes one feature, uh, one feature is one polygon from this and uh, it has to do the area computation and return something. We know how to do this, right? So we'll just uh, say, I'm gonna copy paste the code from the previous script where we have code like this, where we take the create an image at the classification band and turn a group reducer. Uh, we'll, instead of geometry, we just say feature dot geometry. So whatever feature was passed on to the function, we'll use this geometry. And we'll extract um, the results and do a nicely formatted uh, list of uh, list like this. So we get our final result as a dictionary. So we get one dictionary for every feature. Uh, and uh, when you map a function on a feature collection, it expects a feature or an image in return. So we have a dictionary, let's create a feature out of this. So to create our uh, feature, we will say e dot feature, and the feature takes a geometry and some properties. Right, so properties is uh, a dictionary of the key value pairs, so all the uh, attributes and we need a geometry. Geometry is easy, we can just take feature dot geometry. So whatever feature was passed on, we'll just take that and use that as geometry. For properties, we can use uh, the result. The result is the property, right? So all the areas of different classes. So we can create a feature like this. But uh, when you get this, you'll have a feature with some geometry and properties of the area. You won't know what is the name of the feature. It'll be helpful to add that to the name as well. So we'll just extract the, the name of the district. Let's say f dot get adm to name. Okay, so we'll extract the admin to name and then we have our result dictionary. We'll just also uh, set 
the new property called district with the district name. So we'll have all the areas plus a new property called district. And we can just return that. So now we have a function that is capable of taking a feature and returning a feature, which will have the geometry of that particular input and a properties containing the area from the ESA world cover data set. Uh, let's map it on our original collection. So we'll just say, admin to areas is we'll take our selected collection, which is this one where we filtered it to all the districts belonging to a particular state. And we're gonna map this function on top of this. And this will apply this computation on each of these features in parallel. And we can check the results. So it's admin to areas dot first. This has to be a feature. Uh, when you're mapping this on a large collection, if you would try to print the entire thing, it may time out. So a good practice is to call dot first and check uh, the result. So now we can see we have this geometry and these are the properties. So this is the district and these are the areas in square kilometers for each of those areas uh, that are contained within that. All right, so we have a feature collection. We can now export this as CSVs. Uh, we can, uh, when we export this, there's a bit of a problem uh, that each of this district may contain a subset of the classes. So there are 11 classes that are possible. Um, maybe one district has seven classes, one district has five classes. So how to deal with that? Uh, when you are exporting this data, Earth Engine will only export the common denominator. denominator. So it, you may end up with only five values in the output because maybe one district had five and there were missing values for other classes. So to, for us need to export those null values, which are not present, you need to explicitly say, which are the properties that you want to export. So uh, to, we want to create a list of those, uh, all the class values that we need to export. So we'll do some pre-processing. We have to compute this output fields column. And you can just kind of create a list manually where you just input all these values, say, I want to have these columns present in my output where I need a district column, a tree, shrubland, open water, and so on. But we can learn some automated way of doing this. So first, uh, we already have this uh, class dict dot values, right? So we'll say we want to use this. So let me just print that. So now I've got a list of these 11 classes, but I want to add uh, the value of the district. So I will just say cat, cat allows you to join to a list and I want to add another list called district. So now I have a list of this kind of uh, 12 properties that I want to be present for each of my features and I can use that. So let's write our export function. We'll say export table to drive the collection that the collection that we want to export is this one, admin to areas. And specify the description as admin to class areas. The file name prefix will say class area by public two. File format will export this as CSV. We don't really need the geometry. The selector function is the key, where selector parameter is the key, where we need to specify the list of properties that we want present, and we'll specify our output fields. We are done, but we have one last thing to fix. Uh, here, uh, the export function is a client side function. Uh, if you refer to the user guide article on client versus server, you will understand uh, which functions are server side functions and which functions are client side. And you can't mix both of them. So here we have this output fields, which is a server side object, which is an e dot list object. Uh, and we want to use them in an export function. So we need to convert this into a regular JavaScript list. And that is done by this function called getInfo.
uh, get info is not recommended for kind of uh, converting large objects into client side it can it's asynchronous uh, that means it's synchronous that means your code will hang if you try to do this all for a, a value that is very large but for a small kind of list like this it is okay to use get info but if you have a lot of get infos in your code your code will run very slowly your browser will hang so use evaluate uh, instead, I'll leave some documentation link in the description to show you how to use Evaluate better. But for now, we'll just use Get Info, which will convert this E list into a JavaScript list, which can be used inside our function. And let's start our export. All right, the uh, export finished, and we will have a CSV in a Google Drive. I've downloaded this. Uh, a file to my computer and this is what the file looks like so now we have this table uh, where we have each district and the areas in square kilometers of all the different classes in that district and we now got this nice table for each of the regions that we were interested in analyzing uh, if you used your own shape file and it has maybe a thousand polygons you'll get a table of thousand rows one for each of them uh, after the uh, video, you can also try this to do this for your entire country and you'll get a similar table. This is super helpful when you are trying to analyze line cover across large number of geometries. So we come to end of our guided project. Hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. I encourage you to try and implement this for a region of your choice. Maybe tweak it a bit to practice some of those skills. If you enjoyed this project and want to practice some more, I have many such guided projects. Do check out the link to that in the description. Thank you.